general evaluator, fellow Toastmasters, most welcome guests, most of all, Michael. First of all, I would like to congratulate you on completing your third feature or your third project from the advanced manual. Um, I, will, I have a few things to say, but first I would like to follow the uh, guideline that I have to evaluate Michael's speech upon. I would just like to read very fast through uh, a few of uh, the points that I had to evaluate M Michael's speech upon. So the first uh, thing is, did the speaker get and hold the audience attention? Uh, I said yes to that because I felt that the message was very strongly passed on to the audience. I myself was very involved and intrigued in what he had to say, especially about the topic, saying the truth. Truth, my dear friends, is something which we all know about, but yet we are so ignorant about it. And Michael actually brought up this a few times in his speech or talk. So I would say yes to that. Did the speaker generate interest and desire by focusing on the benefits of the product or service to the customer? I said yes, because once again, Michael used a lot of examples. He used his own example as to how and what happened when he was a kid in school. He was bullied and the only way to defend himself against that fright or fear, he started making up lies or stories, which he realized later on that truth was much better. And the third one, did the speaker offer unique selling proposition? Here is something that I have a few comments to give, so we're going to hold on that one. I'm going to come back at the end. The other three, uh, uh, three points on which I had to evaluate basically does not quite apply to Michael's speech at this time because you know we did not see any audiovisuals or displays. There were no questions asked by the audience as such. So, um, we'll come back to the third question. Did the speaker build in enough, build, it, build value into his, his speech through the use of positive word choice, personal enthusiasm? Sorry, no. Did the speaker offer a unique selling proposition, USP? Now, as I said at the beginning, Michael, I liked your speech. The construct of the speech was very good. There was no disconnect whatsoever. I could see that you were very smoothly falling into one part of the story to the other, and it was very engaging because of that. You did give a lot of examples, as I mentioned even before, examples about herbal <coughs> remedies and uh, example about the believer saying and knowing that he knows the truth, but he's actually just trying to uh, emphasize on his opinion. What I would like to recommend, because in this whole speech that you gave, the buyer, because the whole objective of uh, the, the, uh, the speech was selling the truth. When you have to sell something, being a buyer, us being the audience, assuming that we are the buyers, we are looking at the cost of what we are buying. How can I own it? How can I own the product? So you, you spoke about the truth, which is very good. We all saw the reality in that truth. But what's the cost of it? How can I own it? At what cost? I felt that you did not expound too much on these details. Yet you did say at the end that speaking the truth is easier, which I, I believe, I agree. But how can we own it? How can we make it a part of our lives? Is something that I was looking for in the speech. But other than that, once again, I would like to congratulate you on your third speech. You did a very good job. I mean, as always, you are very good on the floor. You are very convincing. And uh, I am looking forward to more of such speeches. Thank you very much.